Things have happened. 
Well, thank the Lord once again for this Friday night service. I'd like to welcome all the saints of God here as you all have joined us for this service online. It's it's really true as of course you are sitting here that more of you, if there's anything that the world, and I believe that if there's anything that we as God's children need in our lives, is more of Him, more of His Word, more of His Spirit, more of His nature. Uh, we need more of, of, of what heaven has to offer us than what this cursed world is offering, um, offering all the ones that are living here on a silver plate. Uh, that's nothing but uh, the cursed world can't offer anything that's blessed. Only, only our God, which is in heaven above and which cares for us, uh, which really loves us, can offer us uh, not only things to live in this life, but Paul said, if we have hope of of of, of only this life, we are men most miserable. But I think so. We have something more. Uh, in a uh, something, uh, hope of something better that's coming ahead. And we have the hope of the life to come. And so much of Christianity is built around uh, today. If you see around us, we see a lot of Christ Christianity. It's, it's, it's not that there's no Christianity, no Christian work that's going on around us. A lot of Christian work, a lot of uh, Christian uh, um, services going on, churches and and uh, you can see it, the internet flooded with with uh, with services, online services, with messages, and so much of Christianity is built around doing things, doing things, and doing works. Um, and uh, and uh, uh, that the main essence of God's purpose. Uh, what is His purpose? His, his purpose was to get us back uh, to the to the to the position, to the state that we were that. Once created in the garden, the image that was marred and lost uh, in the garden has to be restored. That's God's main purpose, uh, and God's main purpose and God's main calling upon the lives of of of, of Christians has been lost in this world. See, uh, the Lord just didn't call us to do things. I'm not against doing things, doing good works. We have to do a good. We have to do our the scripture says Jesus went around doing good. We have to do good. We have to help people. We have to um, uh, if, there's, if, if, if you have the power you need to do good, don't withhold it, the scripture says. So we have to do good. But God just didn't call us to do things. He first called us to be uh, godly. See the scripture here in Acts, the first chapter. When Jesus was uh, leaving this, this, uh, this world after his resurrection, here in Acts and chapter 1, and he tells him about the Holy Ghost that they will receive power, verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And it doesn't say you shall go around doing uh, or bearing my witness. He says, and you shall be witnesses. See, be witnesses, not just bear witnesses. There are a lot of Christians today bearing witness about Jesus. But there are very few whose lives are a witness of Jesus. We are called to be not just do. That's why I think so. We are called human beings. We are called to be faithful. We are called to be uh, holy. We are called to be witnesses. I think again the scripture here in Ephesians, the first chapter, uh, we know these scriptures. Uh, so we we can we can quote these scriptures that are opening up our Bibles. And but let's read. So scripture slowly. It says in verse Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, according as, as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, why did he choose us? That we should be, be holy and without blame before him in love. Be holy and without blame. Not just talk about being holy. Not just talk 
but live a life of holiness live a life of um, that pleases god see that's what the that's what god intends to do in our lives god god's intention is to build godly character within us that's his primary purpose that's what he's been working since the beginning if you write see right from 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 noah and from abraham jacob see god wanted to take that trickster out of jacob and the, that god wanted to take that supplanter out of jacob and he he built a godly character in jacob's life even in with joseph you see see god was building godly character in that young man when he was uh, sold as a slave uh, to the caravan and then sold into Potiphar's house and then falsely accused by Potiphar's wife and put into prison and there he served his sentence in the prison and God was working out something in Joseph's spirit that wouldn't have worked out without those situations, without those conditions, without those, uh, those trials that Joseph had, had to go through. Same with Jacob. He had to serve his father-in-law for 14 years and, and just as he tricked his brother, his father-in-law tricked him. So, so, so God has, has handcrafted certain situations and certain trials for each and every one of us that we have to go through, not for our destruction, but to build up and develop godly character in our lives. That's his purpose. The same thing we look at, at, at the life of Job. He did a lot. He did so many things. I just, I, 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 I can imagine a man living in the Old Testament, and that even before the law was given, and and he made a statement that I, I have not even looked upon a woman. There was, what what a what a life that man Job lived, and he did so much of good. He said, I helped the fatherless, I helped the widows, I pleaded their causes, I I helped the stranger that walked in. Uh, our our village and he did so many things and he did a lot and he boasted about those works see but God wanted Job to be a witness not just bear witness of, by doing good things since we don't want to lose the essence of God's calling upon our lives we want to live lives uh, that will, that will, our lives should speak um, speak more than our words and actions. Our life. Paul Paul uh, told Timothy, I believe, or it was it Titus. I think it's Timothy. He said, "You know my manner of life. You know how I live, Timothy. Uh, I don't I, I don't live one life in the church. One life before you, and one life when I'm alone, or or, or, or when I when I go out and evangelize." Uh, Paul said, "You know my manner of life." And that's what's in the problem with Job was not what he did. The problem with Job was who he was. God intended to change Job's attitude and spirit and wanted to make him more, uh, to have more godly character in him. There was a lot of boasting. There was a lot of glory uh, that was stuffed inside of Job. And Job didn't know that he had so much of boasting inside of him. He had, he had so much of glory in what he had done. And God had to take Job through that, those, those trials in his life so that he can know what was inside of him. There was so much of pride that was hid inside of Job. And that was stinking to God. And since let us all examine our life in this regards, because I believe this is a very great danger that we all as God's children have to face, is that when we spend some time serving the Lord, when we spend few years in the church, and when we fight a few battles, and when we lose some, win some, and do some sacrifices, there is something that that starts building up inside of us that may be that that may be very very detrimental for our Christian growth. Well, that was what was happening with Job. There was there was a lot of boasting, and say I'm telling you, there won't be boasting in the kingdom. There won't be boasting before God's presence. There won't be boasting when Jesus comes. There's a group of people who are boasting. Uh, let's turn to Matthew seven. There was a group of people that were glorying in what they did. 
Matthew the seventh chapter and verse verse 21 not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven many verse 22 will say to me in that day in that day when Jesus comes back many will say to me what will they say Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name that's one word that they did in thy name cast out devils that's a tremendous work that they did in thy name done done many wonderful works or miracles these are the boasters that boasted about their good works I mean when, when we read the scripture this is not talking about about non-christians I believe these are Christians and even in the group of Christians these are leaders I think these are they that call themselves pastors and evangelists and and and, and, and missionaries and, and crusaders and all, what all names and bishop and reverend and right reverend what all names they may be calling these will be those group of people that will be saying a lot about what they did what they did but what is Jesus' answer in verse 23 and then will I profess unto them Jesus has his answer ready he told us that answer 2000 years ago and he told them this is what I will answer them I never knew you depart from me you that work you depend upon your works you boast about your work you don't know Jesus will say you were working iniquity oh but I was I was, I was, I was uh, uh, preaching the word, I had big, big uh, meetings and people were healed. Jesus looks at all those things as iniquity. If there is not a life, if there is not a life that goes along with it. We need to first be witnesses and then go around doing good works and then bear witnesses. See, God's grace is so, so amazing since when you understand something about God's grace, God's grace is not for me to loathe in my sin and to wallow in the muck and the mire of my own self-righteousness. God's grace is given so that I can rise above sin and walk in the, in, 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 in the righteousness that God has, has, has given to me through His Son. God's grace is... See, Paul made a statement, his grace was sufficient. We sing a song, his grace is sufficient for me. His love is so abundant and free. And oh, what joy fills my soul just to know that his grace is sufficient. See, since God's grace is abundant to them that are assured of their calling. You may be, we all have a calling, saints. We all have a calling and God's grace is abundant to them that are assured of their calling. But let's not stop there. But God's grace is also abundant to them that are aware of their weaknesses. That's why grace is given us. That when we are aware of our weaknesses, we won't doubt God or we won't condemn our own selves. But we will acknowledge our weaknesses, we will acknowledge our infirmity, we will, we will stop boasting in what we have done, but Paul said I will glory in my infirmities. See, we need to learn, what we need to learn is that God's power is magnified, is multiplied in weakness, not in boasting. People who boast are never used by God. The power of God will never be magnified in me if I boast about what I have done and what I am doing. God's power is always magnified in weakness. When we are brought to nothing, as we were seeing that, 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 that uh, lesson on Wednesday night, God wants us to come to the end of ourselves. See, His power shows up the best in weak people. I'm not talking about the physically weak or the financially weak or the mentally weak. I'm talking about 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 people who have come uh, who have who have come to a knowledge of their weakness, who know that they are incapable or or uh, or who have known their inability 
Uh, when we talk about weakness, I'm talking about brokenness. See, God takes his best through a school of brokenness. As we have heard that message. So God has a school of breaking people. And when I go through that school, some of, some of us can become more hard and more bitter. But since the best way and the best uh, and the right way, I would say, to, to come out or to graduate from that school is to is to is to um, is to accept my weakness soon. Is to is to break. Is to fall on the rock and break. See, Paul said here, uh, here in Second Corinthians twelve. Let us turn to Second Corinthians twelve. When when I'm talking about weakness or infirmities, I'm talking about a broken heart, a broken spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Jesus said. And Paul said here in Second Corinthians chapter twelve and verse nine, and he says. Uh, when he prays for the thorn to be taken away from his life, he, this is the answer that he received from Christ. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Why? Because my strength, whose strength? Not Paul's strength, this is Jesus' strength. My strength is made complete or perfect or whole in weakness. In weakness. And that's why Paul said, I will not boast in what I have done. I will not boast that I was caught up to the third heaven. I will not boast that I that I planted so many churches. I will not boast that I, uh, I, 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 I worked on the lives of so many people and prepared them for the ministry. He said, I will not glory in all those things. He said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, in my weaknesses. This is not a sinful behavior. Uh, this, is, this, is, this doesn't mean that I glory in my sinful nature, my sinful behavior. No, we need to grieve about our sinful nature. We need to repent from our sinful nature. This is talking about weakness. And how can I glory in my infirmities? How can I glory in my weaknesses? You know how? It's by accepting them. Accepting them. Lord, I accept, O oh God. I can't I can't change this situation. Oh Lord, I accept that you're trying to teach me something. Lord, I won't, won't keep kicking against the pricks anymore. Lord, I accept my incapability. And Paul said, I will glory. Why? Well, in the last part of verse 9, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This was a man that was processed by God and he went through his school of brokenness. See, he, he knew that as long as Paul was strong, God's power will never be manifested through him. But when he, he accepts his weakness and his incapability and his inability, the power of Christ will rest upon him. And this is not a tendency that we are born with, saints. This is, this is a tendency that, that is generated in us, or uh, this tendency is brought about in us by something called as sanctification. That's what sanctification means, that I come to terms with my weaknesses. I accept it. I don't boast, I don't glory in what I have done. Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. He was not talking about his guilt, about his past life. He said, I forget all that I have done for God and for God's people. I don't glory in that because I know the moment I start glorying in what I have done, the power of God will not rest upon me. And I will be just a tool in the hands of the devil to deceive people and take them away from the truth. See, this, this is not a tendency of our flesh to accept our weaknesses. It's, it, our flesh always wants to magnify strength. Our flesh always wants to boast about its accomplishments. Jesus wants here in, in Luke the 20th chapter, I just quoted the scripture sometime back. <clears throat> Luke chapter 20. And he says in verse 18, See, when we encounter Jesus, we will go either one of these two ways. Everyone who encounters Jesus goes to, 
through to one of his two ways. There is no third way. It says in Luke chapter 20 and verse 18, Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. That's one way. And the other way is, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to power, not break him, grind him to power. He will be he, he will be forgotten, he, he will be lost, he will be scattered. See, these, these are the two ways that we always will encounter when we meet Jesus. Either to be broken in pieces or to be ground, ground as dust or power. These are the only two choices really. And since some of God's people are willing to fall on the rock and break, but some of God's people are so adamant that they won't want, they don't want to fall on the rock, but one day the rock falls on them and they will be ground into powder and dust. That's what that's what the scripture says. Let us not let us let us see both these ways, either to fall on the rock or whether the rock to fall on us, both these ways seem indesirable or undesirable. No one would desire both of these ways. Everyone wants to follow Christ because, oh, I want to be blessed. I want to prosper. I want to grow financially. I want to grow uh, strong in what I do. I want to be blessed. Then whatsoever I do, Psalms 1, I want to prosper. That's why people follow Christ. But very few follow Christ because they want to be broken. Why are we following Christ? See, the Lord didn't create us to be grounded into powder. The Lord created us so that we can be broken in pieces. And God always works best in a man and through a man who is broken. Read your Bible and you will see this lesson that God has taught all his men. See, that's God's canvas. God's canvas that he God paints on is a man who is broken. That's God's canvas. God doesn't intend to grind us into powder or dust. But we need to understand, He also doesn't intend us to remain intact. God doesn't intend us to remain intact and God doesn't intend us to grind, ground us into powder, but what God intends us to be broken. A broken heart I gave, a worthless thing. God intends man to break. To fall on the rock and break. That's why we encounter hardships and we encounter hurts in our life. Here we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. This is Paul talking about a treasure. In, in what kind of a vessel? He's talking about an earthen vessel. He says verse 7. 2 Corinthians 4, 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Not vessels of gold and silver, but earthen vessels which are dishonored by men. Which are not, which are not counted uh, worthy, but they are dishonored vessels. Not vessels of gold and silver, but the treasure in us is more important than the vessel that carries that treasure. Otherwise, if the vessel is of gold, people will look at the vessel and not at the treasure. But if people want to magnify God by looking at us, there, there has to be nothing, nothing, uh, um, nothing that we can boast about ourselves, but we can, what we can boast about is the treasure that God's put inside of us. That's the life of Christ. That's the light of the gospel of the life of Jesus. That's what he's talking about here. For God commanded light to shine out of darkness. And that light has shined in our hearts. To, uh, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's the treasure we have. Now in our in our earthen vessels through the Holy Spirit. There was, there was nothing comely, the scriptures in Isaiah. When, 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 when you beheld Jesus, there was nothing, nothing that you can like him. 
uh, what the hell is it to say in, in Isaiah 53, isn't it? Let me, let me turn that scripture. We turned as if our faces, the scripture says, from, from him. Uh, yes, Isaiah 53, verse, verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. Can you find any glory here in the outer manifestation of Jesus, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief? And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. There was nothing that that, that man would like seeing the outer physical appearance of Jesus. But you know what? There was a treasure inside of Jesus that God the Father acknowledged. And because his body was broken, we found salvation. God always works the best through a man or a woman who is broken. And Paul said this is a treasure that we had in our earthen vessel. See Paul was aware and Paul, Paul accepted and Paul was convinced of his weakness. The Lord only demonstrates his power through someone who is utterly convinced of his weakness, who is utterly convinced of his inadequacy, who is utterly convinced of his inability and insufficiency. That's where Paul writes uh, in 2 Corinthians 12. Let's, let's read a few verses in 2 Corinthians 12 now. After we have, I hope you have, uh, you're getting the essence of what I'm speaking here. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 7 onward. It says, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. And for this I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for thee, because my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, all that I want, I won't frown. I won't have a frown on my face, but I will be glad. And I will rejoice and glory in my infirmities, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, in verse 10 he says, I take pleasure. I take pleasure in, in infirmities, when people reproach me, uh, when, when I am in necessity. I, don't, I need something, but I don't have the resources to get those things. And, and, and in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong? We are not strong when we are strong. We are strong when we are weak. When we are weak, that's when Christ is strong in us. And this is not humanly possible, saints, but it only has to come from God. That's what I've understood. And, and much of God's dealing saints in my life. That's what I'm talking about a personal testimony. Much of God's dealing with me are designed to make me or I would say convince me of my weakness. But I but but do I agree when God shows me my weakness or my incapability or my insufficiency, do I agree? Do I accept it? Or do I do I do I keep kicking and keep justifying myself and my behavior? Since the power of Christ can only rest on me if I glory in my infirmities, if I accept my weakness, if I become zero, I, if I continue decreasing and Christ continues increasing in me. The power of Christ can only rest on me if I glory in my infirmities. When I get less and less confident about myself and more and more confident about his work and his plan and his will for my life. Last scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse, verse 5 Paul says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. Paul said, I, 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 we don't glory in ourselves. We are not sufficient to do anything. Our sufficiency is not from ourselves or from our own capabilities or, or what we have achieved or what we have accomplished. But he says, but our sufficiency is of God. If it wasn't for God, Paul said, 
I would have been a Pharisee still. But because of God, he said, for what I am is because of the grace of God. He, 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 he goes ahead, he, he, before that he says, oh, but I labored abundantly than all the other apostles. But he comes back. See, he comes back and he acknowledged it was not me. He says, it was not me, but it was the grace of Christ that was working through me. It was, I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me. And when I am weak. That's when he strengthens me. Let's come to terms with our weaknesses. Let's glory. In our infirmities. Let's stop glorying in our. Our, th- our, our works. And, and the things that we have done. And the sacrifices that we have done. There's a lot of people that do that. Let's have the mind of Christ. And the spirit of Christ. And the heart of Christ. Let's be witnesses. Then rather just be a part of the crowd, just rather, rather than being a part of that many who are doing things, but saying there are very few in this world tonight that are being a witness. And we want to be among that number. Many shall strive to enter in, but they will not be able to. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way, and very few be there that find it and very few be there that walk that narrow way you know why because it's not easy to walk accepting our infirmities and glory in our infirmities and boasting about our infirmities because when we are weak that's when he is strong thank God for a church thank God for a Friday night I, I I hope we can meditate on these few things that we have listened here tonight. I hope the Lord touches our hearts, saints. Unless the Lord saints, let's pray. God, if, if, if we are heard, hearing something new, some of our friends who are not a part of this church, if we are hearing something new tonight, ask God to touch our hearts and our minds. Ask God to open up His word to our hearts and open up our hearts to His word. Let the Lord take come in and take control of our hearts and our minds. And, and since if there be only a willing mind, the scripture says, let's show God a desire to know Him more. And the Lord is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Seek me while I can be found, the scripture says. Let's continue to seek the Lord. And, and, and says when we seek God, we find ourselves. That's true. We really come to know about ourselves and how 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 much lacking we are. And all glory is taken away, all boasting disappears, saints. And there's nothing that I can boast about, there's nothing that I can glory in save Jesus and Jesus alone. I can't even overcome with my own strength. They overcame, the scripture said in Revelation, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. That is their lifestyle. Saints, let's have, let's have a desire to get closer to the Lord every day of our lives. Let's have a longing uh, to be in the presence of God always. Uh, let's, let's continue to ask God to touch our eyes let the scales fall off of our eyes and let the Lord open up our eyes saints where we can know we can see that everything that we are striving for in this world is temporary temporal temporal and it's going to be 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 destroyed one day but only the things that we do not see are eternal and they are in the state let us set our affections on the things which are above and not just on the things which are on this earth Let's be ready for the return of Jesus our Christ. Let's continue to look up to him who is the author and the finisher of our life, our salvation, our faith. And let's continue to run this race with patience. Let's endure the cross. Let's despise the shame. Let's glory in our infirmities. Let's accept our weaknesses. And may the power of God rest upon each and every one of us.
Amen. Thank God for the church. Let's all continue to pray for one another. Let's all pray for the prayer requests on the church group. Let's all continue to pray for brother and sister Senji. Let's remember them in our prayers and all the saints of God, all the ministers in the body of Christ and the churches throughout. Uh, let's all remember them all in, in our prayers and let's ask God to bless us this, this weekend. Amen. Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, we once again thank you for this precious words that you gave us here tonight. Lord, help us to acknowledge and admit and be convicted of our weaknesses, O oh Father. Lord, we just won't, don't want to be keep to keep kicking against the pricks. Just don't want to boast and glory in our accomplishments and what we have done, O oh Father. Lord, as the serpent beguiled Eve, we don't want to be beguiled and be deceived from the simplicity that is in Jesus. Father, but we want to stay faithful. We want to endure till the end. We want to have that treasure that's there in our earthen vessels, so Lord, that the glory should not be of us, but it should be from, if it should be of Jesus, Lord, because our sufficiency is not because of us. Our sufficiency is because of Christ. Help us to acknowledge it. Help us to run this race. Help us to endure till the end. Help us, O oh Father, O oh Lord, to treasure brokenness, to, 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 to glory in brokenness, to fall on the rock and break into pieces. And O oh Lord, you take those pieces in your hands and you make out of us vessels that you would use for your glory. Help us, O oh Lord. We don't want the rock to fall on us and ground us into powder. Father, but while there is still hope, we want to fall on the rock and break. Be with each and every one of us. Bless all your children. Brother and Sister Senji, continue to bless them and keep them and all the ministers in the body, all the saints in the fellowship. Father, bless all your children everywhere and continue to protect us as we're in the midst of this pandemic. Now, Lord, you help us. You continue to have your hand upon us and lead us and guide us on your paths of righteousness. Once again, thank you for this service. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen and Amen. God bless you all.